There's an old saying that you should never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. And so for the last week and a half, Donald Trump has been sitting back quietly, probably playing golf every day, watching the Democrat Party completely eat their own and the liberal media break into different factions as they try to figure out what they're going to do about old Joe. And every day now, things continue to get worse for the Democrats as the finger pointing continues. But perhaps the craziest excuse of all comes from Missouri Congresswoman Cori Bush, who has this theory about what happened. Congresswoman, can you describe the temperature in the room? Biden right now. Right now, the same right wing influences that are that are trying to, to take me down are trying to take down President Biden. So that's where my head is. But I'm listening to my colleagues and I'm listening to my constituents. At the end of the day, we got to beat back these right wing influencers. <laughs> it's the right wing influencers who are to blame now. <laughs> They can't agree on what happened. They can't agree on what to do. They can't agree on who to blame. Joy Reid, the angry black woman over on MSNBC, however, is pointing the finger at fellow Democrats, but not just ordinary Democrats. You know what kind of Democrats. But please, please, privileged, rich, white, elected Democrats. You just keep public. It's the white Democrats who are behind this whole mess. But please, please, privileged, rich, white, elected Democrats, you just keep publicly defenestrating your party leader and president to feed the media thirst for Democrats and disarray stories because you're scared for your own seats and apparently don't know how to campaign on a surging economy, high tech jobs and thirty five dollar insulin. I mean, you're you're the most important thing here, right? You and your donors, of course, not the actual voters in your party base who can't afford to see prices double on everything they buy due to Trump's China tariffs and who would be the first ones fired from their federal civil service jobs under Project 2025 or. Now, that's a professional gaslighter right there, pivoting from talking about old Joe's obvious mental incapacitation and putting the spotlight back on Donald Trump and blaming him for everything. Joy Blowhard and Joy Behard over at The View got the same memo as Joy Reid. Welcome to this uh, very nice to have you here. So everyone's talking about President Biden's uh, debate performance. As I pointed out, the other guy was even worse, in my opinion. I'm, I'm babbling and not making sense and lying. So that's the narrative behind the pro Biden camp is to just pretend that he didn't really do that bad at the debate and it was actually Donald Trump who couldn't finish his sentence and lost. Stephen Colbert hasn't decided which faction he's going to support just yet, the old Joe faction, the Kamala Harris faction, or the Gavin Newsom's faction, and instead is just expressing his severe frustration and utter shock at what's happening. Then Joe assured the governors that he knows what went wrong, saying he needs more sleep. yes. He is what experts call Tai Tai. <laughs> I guess you could say he's Sleepy Joe. <laughs> ah, Donald Trump was right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That is the first time that Stephen Colbert, a supposed comedian, has ever made me laugh. Later in the show, however, he interviewed one of CNN's primetime diversity anchors and told her that he was disappointed that they even hosted the debate. Do you think that the debate should have happened? Absolutely. Why? You know he's going to lie, and the other guy is the president of the United States who should should not be dignifying this criminal who tried to overthrow democracy and does not believe in the process. (laughs) I, I absolutely, I think the American people need to know what they're getting. But they already know they've both been president of the United States. It's not like one of them is a mystery. No, Mr. Colbert, half of the country obviously didn't know what they were getting because they believed the gaslighting coming from the liberal media industrial complex that old Joe was just fine (laughs) until they saw the emperor had no clothes with their own eyes. Look, if we finally beat Medicare... While Stephen Colbert is leaning towards the Stand with Joe faction, Jon Stewart, the former comedian turned liberal propagandist who is guest hosting The Daily Show once or twice a week on Comedy Central through the election, is with the Biden must resign faction and did an entire rant venting his frustration that he hasn't stepped down yet. Authoritarianism and Donald Trump aren't the only threats our democracy faces. An arthritic status quo, unable or unwilling to respond in any way to the concerns of voters who just received new and urgent information about their candidate, also erodes confidence and faith in the system of government. Actually, it erodes confidence and faith in the Democrat Party. (laughs) Get on board or shut the 
up is not a particularly compelling pro-democracy bumper sticker. <laughs> Nor is, what are you going to do? Congressman Eric Swalwell, for now, is with the Stand With Old Joe camp and apparently thinks that he's a comedian, too. It's a little late, Chris, uh, in the election season for a party's presumptive nominee to step down. Uh, but I'm going to call on uh, one of the nominees to do that right here. Uh, Donald Trump should step aside. He's a convicted uh, felon, uh, owes hundreds of millions of dollars for fraud, tried to run a coup on his country. There are people in this country who are less cruel and more competent, who could do the job probably 350 million deep. And so that's the person who should be stepping down. <laughs> I keep forgetting that Donald Trump has been indicted and even convicted by a kangaroo court on these bogus charges because that's how little they matter. <laughs> Stay tuned because there's more to come in this video. But real quick, that's why I released my Teflon Don 2024 shirt, which you should order from my online store, markdice.com. Click the link in the description below. Others at MSNBC, however, are publicly plotting the coup against old Joe and strategizing on air about how they can force him to step down. So he gets through today. Now a NATO summit takes the middle of the week. There mm -hmm. is no way anybody is going to undermine the president in their own party while he is yeah. meeting with NATO leaders about the future of freedom in Europe. So yeah. so maybe that has bought him two, two and a half more days. He does hold the cards here. I mean, it, this yeah, is he his decision. He holds all of them. And so if you're going to get him out, you're going to you're going to have to push. You're going to have to convince. You're going to have to push. Um, he, he, but he's going to have to make the decision. Uh, and his decision right now is he's in the race to stay. At this point, if the Democrat crime syndicate decides that it would be best for them that old Joe step down, then he's going to get the it's what it is talk. Just like from The Irishman, a scene, if you're not familiar with it, depicts the mafia deciding and trying to tell Jimmy Hoffa that they decided that he's not going to be allowed to run the union again. Tony told the old man to tell me, to tell you, mm -hmm. it's what it is. He doesn't quite understand the message that Robert De Niro's character is trying to convey to him or the... Uh, danger that he's putting himself in by not going along with their plan. What it is. It's what it is. Now it clicks. Please listen to me. They wouldn't dare. Don't, don't they say. wouldn't dare. Jimmy, Please, Frank, come on. Don't say they wouldn't dare. No, don't don't tell me that kind of that that's that, that's fairy tale. Don't say, Please, don't, don't say they wouldn't dare. Obviously, they did dare. And of course, I don't wish any harm against old Joe, and they probably wouldn't even go to that extreme in order to uh, send him a message. There are still other tactics that they would deploy, but that's how serious these people are. Green Jean Pierre's job it is to defend old Joe. She gets paid almost $200,000 a year to stand in front of the American people and lie on a daily basis, is so exhausted and demoralized from trying to defend the indefensible that she can barely even get through a press conference. So say that the Pentagon at some point picks up an incoming nuke. It's 11 p.m. Who do you call, the first lady? He has a team that uh, lets him know of any, of any news that is pertinent and important to the American people. Uh, he has someone or that is decided, obviously, with his National Security Council on who uh, gets to tell him that news. Not only would it be a problem if that call came in at 11 o'clock, <laughs> old Joe's bedtime is around 8.30. It would be a problem if that call came in before dinner, because as old Joe's staff has admitted, he struggles to function, well, obviously 24-7, but especially after 4 p.m. The Democrat Party is in such shambles that the official Biden campaign Twitter account, the Biden-Harris headquarters, is now attacking Brian Stelter, of all people, for just pointing out the obvious, for trying to give the Biden campaign some advice. A critique of Biden right now is that he's stuck in the past talking about his past accomplishments. So ironically, Project 2025, even though it scares a lot of liberals, it's actually a forward-looking plan. Biden would benefit from talking more about what Trump is proposing and what the Heritage Foundation wants to do, and to contrast that with his own plans for the future, rather than talking about the past. He literally was just trying to help them but they didn't understand. And so now they think that Brian Stelter, of all people, is siding with the Trump campaign. 
Meanwhile, this Brian Stelter doppelganger has coined a new nickname for old Joe that he thinks is going to help. The bottom line is, I'm going with Joey Jobs over Donnie Do-Nothing any day of the week. Joe Biden doesn't care about your job, sir, <laughs> or any jobs for any American citizens. His new base is the 30 million plus illegal aliens that the Democrats have allowed to invade our country and their anchor babies, which is just another reason to support Donald Trump and order my sorry, no vacancy, deport them all shirt from my online store, markdice.com, or click the link in the description below. Or get your MAGA Mafia shirt, the Teflon Don shirt, an Appeal to Heaven shirt, or any of my awesome designs. Now many, not all, but most available in tank tops as well for the summer. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out. <laughs>